Greetings from CMC Velour. I will be talking on hemihamid arthroplasty with focus on tips and tricks to avoid complications. The stability of the PIP joint is due to both bony as well as soft tissue structures. The bony structure being the vola buttress, as you can see here in this picture, which is at the base of the middle phalanx. The PIP fracture dislocations are classified as stable and unstable based on the amount of the vola buttress that is fractured. The soft tissue structures are collectively called the ligament box complex and uh, includes the vola plate and the collateral ligament, as you can see in these photographs. Hastings identified that the hamate distal articular surface is very similar to that of the articular surface of the vola buttress. And he described the hemihamid arthroplasty where the vola buttress is reconstructed when it is irreparable using a osteochondral graft taken from the hamate. And this has radically changed the management of PIP fracture dislocations. Here's a patient who had a PIP fracture dislocation. When we opened the joint, this is what we see. And the only way to reconstruct this is a hamate graft. One thing is never forget the lateral X-ray of the digits for assessing the fracture. The key points in surgery is skin incision is a Brunner incision and the fully flap is elevated to expose the joint. Once the joint is exposed by shotgunning, you can see uh, this uh, picture and then you have to take the prepare the graft site and make take the measurements. The uh, graft is harvested carefully without breakage and attached to the recipient side with screws. A num it's a technically demanding procedure and a number of pitfalls are quite common, like a small graft being harvested. This can be avoided by taking accurate measurements. Graft while harvesting can break. So remember to pre-drill pre with a 0.8 mm KY before the osteotomy and ensure that sharp, fine osteotomes are used. The other important thing is the angle of insert of the graft, which must reconstruct the curvature of the articular surface. Here you can see two different uh, lateral views. In the first one, the articular curvature has been uh, reconstructed correctly so that the joint is still uh, relocated. Uh, and uh, while in this one, the angle is not correct and therefore the joint is subluxated. So this is what you have to be very careful while you're doing the procedure. This is a speeded up video of the surgical technique, Brunner incision and the pulley flap is elevated. This is followed by sharply dissecting the collateral ligament from the vola plate and elevating the vola plate as a proximally based flap. The collateral ligaments are sharply incised off the bone to shotgun the joint. And once the joint is shotgunned, the uh, graft site, recipient site is prepared. The graft is harvested from the dorsum using a transverse incision. The hamate articular surface is delineated and using 0.8 mm KY is pre-drilled. After marking the graft, sharp osteotomes are used to make the side and the proximal cut first. Once this is done, a curved osteotome is used to make the vola cut so that the graft comes out without breakage. On the table, KYs, drills are, uh, two KYs are used to drill the graft so that the graft can be easily transported to the recipient site and uh, temporarily fixed there. Then the two screws are used to fix the graft rigidly. This is the procedure. Complications which we've seen during this procedure is a PIP flexion deformity, which is quite common and can easily be corrected by serial uh, splinting. Unusual complications are graft resorptions, which may be avoided by rigid fixation and also allowing time for union before any uh, heavy lifting is uh, allowed. 
PIP ankylosis happens when the cartilage is damaged during the procedure or because of the injury. And uh, all uh, care must be taken to protect this cartilage. We've seen swan neck deformities in chronic injuries. And uh, as you can see in this patient, this developed about six months after the original procedure. And when we checked, took an X-ray, we found that the graft had resorbed uh, slightly, as well as on exploration, we found that the volar plate appeared unattached. So we have uh, described some modifications to improve the stability, and this has been published as the augmented hamate replacement arthroplasty. What we do is we use a transosseous suture to um, reattach the volar plate to the hamate graft and then repair the collateral ligament to the volar plate to complete the reconstruction of the ligament box complex, also in addition to the reconstruction of the volar buttress. This is a, our uh, modification, and uh, we use this transosseous uh, drill hole through which a hypodermic needle is passed, and then ethibond suture is threaded through this to reattach the volar plate to the hamate graft, as you can see in this uh, video. Once the volar plate is reattached, we repair the collateral ligaments on either side to this uh, volar plate, thus ensuring the reconstruction of the ligament box complex. Then the pulley flap is uh, tunneled under the tendon and repaired to uh, cover any protruding screws. Here's a 10-week-old injury in a 17-year-old male, pre- and post-op pictures, sees the, shows the good reconstitution of the joint, and this is the five-year follow-up showing excellent function. And this is the video at the end of five years. And I'm happy to say that this patient uh, managed to join the army who has very uh, exacting technical demands for all its soldiers. So the hemihamate arthroplasty is an excellent option in the management of PIP factor dislocations. And it is technically demanding. Uh, there are the complications which you have seen have been already described. And our modifications does help to improve stability by reconstructing the ligament box complex in addition to the volar buttress. Thank you for the patient listening. Mm -hmm.